Hello and welcome to Green Giant Tax Crew. Uh, today we'll be covering a thing which will be more for the advanced player. Uh, when you get further into the games, uh, while you're playing Airsoft, you're going to find yourself uh, wanting to communicate better. Uh, normally uh, when you're starting out you'll start with just shouting at people and hoping that they listen. Um, but it's not optimal and you will get a sore voice eventually. So what we're covering today is communications. Wow, yeah. Um, what I have here are two typical radios that people pick up off eBay or Amazon or something like that and then use for communications. They're both incredibly cheap. Um, there are issues with both uh, on the legality side. Uh, which I'll cover later. But first off, um, this is a Baofeng UV5RA. Uh, this is a newer version of it. You will see older iterations around. Um, it's it's re well, it's actually really good. Um, you've got plenty of features on it. A lot of stuff that you're never going to use in airsoft. Um, and some truly bizarre ones at that as well. Um, whilst you've got the usual stuff, you've so I'll just turn it on to the camera. You've, when you first turn it on, that damn thing to turn on. There we go. It will light up the display or make a beep. When you first get the radio, it will have a uh, over talk uh, sort of digital voice that will tell you as you change the channels or the frequency and read it out to you. This is not optimal. Turn it off. Because <laughs> it just annoy your uh, fellow players. Um, other than that, you have a digital display at the top which shows what frequency you're on. And then on this side, you've got uh, a number uh, which indicates which channel you're on. You notice there are two rows. Um, this basically means this is a, a dual scanning radio, so you can maintain contact on two channels at once, um, which means that in a larger play scenario, uh, you can maintain coverage over a squad radio channel and that of a command channel as well. So um, it will automatically swap to whichever channel is the last one to have a contact on, but then you can also control the channel with the blue button down here, which you'll see the little chevron will swap and the display will light up. So the chevron's now on the bottom channel, so it's now on that. Um, obviously I've got them both on the same channel at the moment because I don't need them on two channels. Um, other than that, you have fairly long aerial. I haven't actually had the chance to test this yet in a live environment. Um, but from what I've seen of these from other people using them, they outrange the other option I've got sitting on the table. So um, they also have the advantage because they're a newer radio, they can use the correct stepping uh, between the channels. Um, we have to generally use PMR446, which is the free unlicensed radio things, uh, radio set. What we can't technically do with these is use them on PR, PMR 40, uh, 446 is because that has a maximum power rating of half a watt. Uh, the minimum on these radios, and this is the case of both of these radios, is a watt, so they're actually too powerful to use. You can get a uh, Ofcom uh, business light radio license, but that only covers certain frequencies and that doesn't exempt you from using uh, getting caught out on PMR 446. Uh, so if you do use it, be warned you may get caught. Um, other than that, you've got decent strong clip on the back. Uh, when you first get this, this will not be attached, you'll have to screw this on. In the thing you'll also get a charging dock, which is over there somewhere. Um, I, Decent, decent battery. This has got a 1800 milliamp hour LiPo, so good luck letting that run out. 
uh, in the game day. It's just not going to happen. Um, because with the other radio I'll show you in a second, uh, that has a 700 milliamp hour uh, nickel metal hydride. That will last eight hours. So this will never run out in a game day. You could probably last an entire weekend there on it, uh, if not more. Um, this also runs in VHF and UHF, so you've got frequency band from uh, 133.125 MHz through 136, as well as 440 through 417 MHz, which is the band which you'll need to bodge on to 446. Um, yeah. Um, as well as that, you also have some bizarre features which I don't quite get the point of. Uh, fine, you're at an airsoft game, you're missing the footy, no worries. Yeah, not the greatest point because it's on auto tunes to a channel which is conveniently classic FM, but let's not go into that. Uh, you also have a torch, I've yet to divine how to turn that on because the manual, while uh, being great and all that is typical Chinglish. You can forget about decrypting that. Um, it's also rather difficult to decrypt uh, what you're supposed to do to actually program channels into it. Um, it has one of the most extensive menus I've ever come across. Um, so hit the menu button, which, I can, which is on the left hand top. Uh, far left on the menu, on uh, the keypad itself, hit the menu, then you use the arrow keys there to navigate through the entire menu, of which there are a ridiculous amount of options. Um, uh, from the top of my head, it's something like 40 different options with between uh, three and seven sub options on each, and then the further dictation of whatever else you can do on the keypad as it is. Um, so, that's that one. Um, you've got, obviously you've got some things you can change between frequency and channel modes. You've got a nice backlit display. You've got dual channel scanning. This is probably the better of the two radios I'm about to go through. So, um, obviously for PTT purposes, so if you're running your uh, fake uh, sword ins or contacts, you'll want to be able to check that you can actually connect this up. You can. It uses a standard two-pin Kenwood connection, uh, which is accessible by the flap on the side. Get this thing open, where you've got an obvious connector on the side. Get it to camera focus. There we go. So you've got two connectors at the top, the bottom one being for your headphones and the top one being the mic. So just use your standard Z Tactical U94s or whatever else you like using. Uh, then that will connect up to your headset. Uh, this does also come with an earpiece and a mic. It's junk, just don't even bother. <laughs> um, uh, we've got a small lap. Hmm. Okay, so I can get this in focus. Okay, just there you've got a lanyard loop, so It'll stop you from dropping it, in theory. Um, but to be honest, if you put this through a mobile loop, you're not going to drop it anyway because the clip. It, I had this on my backpack. It took me about 15 minutes to get it back off again, so uh, it's not falling off. Right. Next, we have a Motorola GP68. These are out of China. They are old. Uh, these are usually reconditioned radios uh, from the Asian markets. Uh, you used to be able to get them on the UK market, but that was a long, long time ago. Um, so, generally, um, yes, they're cheap. They'll do the frequencies of PMR446 because they cover uh, UHF 440 through 470, but you will get bollocked a lot if you get caught with this because you cannot license them because they don't do 12 and a half kilohertz stepping. Uh, I think the maximum is 25 kilohertz steps, which means you'll get channel uh, deviation. So whereas with Balfeng you can go across 
where you can accurately get onto the channels in the correct structure. This will sort of hover, in some cases, channel one um, on PMR is sketchy. You'll sort of dip in between channel one and channel two on this because you can't get close enough. Um, channel two is okay. Uh, forget about three, it just, I don't know what it is, but it just deviates across four channels. It's, so you get traffic from all over the place. Um, so yeah, if you're doing anything, you're basically stuck with about three channels of the eight, which are usable on this. On the upside, this is a hell of a lot easier to program because it's, well, it's Motorola, so they do things well. And it is a real Motorola, it's not a uh, fake. Uh, you, can, you get a certificate with this and so on, and it's very easy to spot the fake certificates. Uh, you've got an obvious readout of what mode you're in. Uh, if I can get off the shiny. Uh, so you've got the readout there. That does light up, but I've disengaged it because I was using this before. In a night game, lights up display, shots everywhere, comes straight at me. Um, this gets ridiculously loud. Um, if I use the right knob. And then, make sure that radio is off. So, I'm on the same channel. And so, while I'm not speaking into it, because I'll just create a feedback loop, um, that's more than you're going to need for anything. This is easier to get PTTs for, which is the upside of it, um, because everyone sells a Motorola 2 pin. Um, this is probably also the more robust radio, but that's probably due to its size and Motorola builds things to last. Um, unlike with the bell thing, this clips in at the back, this actually slides in and locks. Uh, then if you want to disengage, you have to push tab down at the top. Um, you have plenty of buttons. These are a little bit more complicated. It's easier to use the lock on this because it's obvious which key it is. So hold that down. The star, well, yeah, the star with also, and then it goes into F lock, and that means the entire keypad is locked. And the only manipulation you can do is with the volume control. Uh, that said, when you've got this working, do not put in anything higher than low mode because high has a habit of. Uh, creating a little bit too much squelch, so that's how much how tight the channel transmission is. Um, probably due to the stacking. So um, now between the two, because nowadays these are pretty much identically priced, buy one of these. Uh, you're going to be able to license it under a business like radio, so you'll be able to use the uh, one thirty frequencies and there are those and you can find those on the Ofcom website for the correct ones once you've got the license. The license is £75 for five years so it's not as if it's a hell of a lot of money and you can get it in group licenses as well so um, they're not restricted to site. Uh, well you have variations of the license. I personally have a version which allows me to deviate between sites it's attached to the radios and myself rather than the location of it. Um, other than that, that's it. It's been Green Giant Tactical doing a little review on the radios. Thank you very much.